Hey everyone, I was hoping to get this message put together sooner, but things like this unfortunately take time to set up. I just want to say that the acts of war against Ukraine break my heart, and I know as a prior service member myself that my thoughts and prayers go out to everyone who's fighting the fight that they really shouldn't have to. That being said, we have been working behind the scenes with all of our podcasts and podcast partners to put a fund together in order to pay for any refugee housing and other needs that go alongside that, like food, water, and any clothing needs. Internally, many podcasts in the Hospitality FM network have voluntarily given up sponsorship money in order to donate to the cause and are working on a unified message in order to spread throughout all of our podcasts. So this is me calling out to all of our property manager friends, industry experts, and anyone knowing of those providing lodging for Ukrainian refugees seeking safety. You can contact me directly at will, with one L, W-I-L, at slicktalkmedia.com. We have an internal document that is being updated in real time, so if anyone could share this message within your network, we'd greatly appreciate it. I'm also placing in the show notes a link to our GoFundMe and landing page for Rentals to Rescue. That's rentals.torescue.com, where we're putting funds together in order to, again, provide finances for any of these lodging and relocation needs. So thank you so much for tuning into this quick message. I hope you guys are all well and safe, as I know we have tons of listeners in Ukraine and other countries in, in Europe. So thank you so much for tuning in, and I hope you guys enjoy this episode. All right, and we are live. So, welcome, gentlemen. How are we doing today? Good. First yeah, snow was- yesterday. It was amazing. It was so early. I'm still excited because I saw waking up with snow again. So, beside this, also work. Everything is great. Person is great. So, all good from my you side. Have a white Christmas, Michael. Cool. I saw you one week ago, two weeks ago. You showed a picture. You show yourself on the beach. What is it? Now I'm seeing snow in here. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. How was Thanksgiving for you, uh, Golden? Did you have it a good Thanksgiving? Good. It, was, it was different. Um, I'm used to being around tons of family and the grandmas and all that, but didn't, yeah. uh, didn't do that this year, but still it was a nice break of, of work and ready to, to close out the year. Agreed. It's going to be weird to have a normal five-day work week this week, so trying to adjust back to, <laughs> back to <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's going to be good. Well, I'll play our intro real quick, and then we'll uh, hop right into the, the show. Cool. Perfect. So this week we have a special, you know, flow. Uh, we've brought in a guest once. Uh, now we have a second guest on the show. So we're going to jump right into our new segments, which we launched last week, which I'm really excited about because you guys have some cool, cool stuff to talk about all the time. And I like listening to the bid eruption report and what's with all the noise. So I'm actually going to kick it off with uh, Michael from Bidroom. We'll have you go ahead and take the lead on this one and get ready to rock and roll. Sounds good. Hi, guys. Yeah, this week I've got a startup again to be mentioned. It's not a typical startup, it's something special. I met Paras Lumba, who is the founder and CEO of Global Himalaya Expedition, which also initiated Mountain Homestays uh, two years, three years ago. And actually, I was impressed by his story. So actually, what is Mountain Mountain Homestays doing? They actually they have homestays in the Himalayas, in the mountains, as it says. Um, also, it's actually part of the global Himalaya expedition. And actually, what they're doing, and it's and um, I'm so proud, actually, what they're doing. So actually, they're organizing expeditions uh, in villages, actually, which are not electrified so far. So actually, they're going there with, with, uh, with travelers, actually. So they're offering it as an expedition. 
they take all the materials actually to electrify, solar electrify the city. So I think in total they impacted actually more than 60,000 people so far. So actually they, those people now they have the opportunity to have light, uh, to have energy uh, in their village. So it's impressive what they did. They won a lot of awards. They get grants. Uh, one or two months ago, they won the uh, UN, United Nations, the Global Climate Action Award. So it is uh, great to, to know Paris. I, I speak with them often. I'm so impressed what they're achieving and what they're doing for, uh, for people. So it's not a typical startup, um, but actually how they're acting, what they're doing, I think it's super impressive to be mentioned. So for me, I just wanted to mention them. So Mountain Homestays is for me uh, something special. And I wanted to uh, actually compliment them what they are achieving so far. Um, also, what I always want to address is something different, is the events which are coming up. Um, last week, I, mean, I mentioned a few events I was attending. Uh, last Friday, we had the IMIT Hotel Conference uh, organized by students of the SHMS, Swiss Hotel Management School. It was really well done. Compliments for them. And this week, I will be attending two conferences. So if you want to listen to me more, uh, tomorrow morning, I do a panel session with Krota. Uzo Krota is the largest uh, conference by far in Turkey. Uh, last year we attended as well. Also last year we won as Bidroom the prize for the best foreign startup. And it was a really, really nice conference. So unfortunately this year it's virtually because last year it was really, really great. Um, but again, I'm really curious how it's going to be uh, this year virtually. But I know the organizations always do really, uh, really impressing. And uh, we might win again this year. So let's see. But last year we won the award for best foreign startup. And uh, let's see uh, as soon as the elections will start, the voting will start in January. Second thing is also where we speak is HiCon. It will be on Thursday and on Wednesday the third. Uh, no, Thursday the third. Uh, I was speaking in there. Nice lineup, really about innovation again. I think that's also one of the keywords of 2020. So I'll talk about more about innovation in tourism, hospitality, and uh, I will talk more about increasing bookings and customer value in the subscription economy. So really my topic. Looking forward to it, and uh, that's my part for this week. And I'm looking forward to the bid eruption report already for next week. Awesome. Thank you, Michael. That's awesome. Hello, hello. I missed uh, Grandma at Thanksgiving, but good to see her on the screen again this week. Um, I, I'm probably throwing Will a curveball on what article I'm covering today. I I'm switched it up this morning, but Skift came out with an article called The Future of Short-Term Rentals and wanted to highlight a few points that they brought up and maybe talk about what my views are of it. Basically, the, the article is saying it's going to be a long, dark winter. And in some ways, I agree. In some ways, I disagree. Um, it's yet to be seen what's going to happen in ski markets. I think the, the window of booking is so tight now, you can't really predict what's going to happen. We do know that a lot of ski mountains or, or lifts are limiting tickets they're selling, but it doesn't mean people aren't still going to go down to the beach and have an ocean view for Christmas or get away in, in January. Um, I think a lot of people are optimistic about the uh, vaccine that's coming out, and they should be, but it's going to be probably Q2 before it's distributed. So we, we definitely have to get through this winter. Another piece that the, the article highlights is the crushing regulations are starting to come. And this is multifaceted and has been coming for a long time, but we expect it to, the pendulum to continue to swing back and forth until cities really understand and know how to regulate rentals. When that happens, you limit licenses in cities. And when you're limiting licenses in cities, then the people that don't get licensed will probably sell their properties. Uh, a lot of investors are already selling their properties because property prices are at an all-time high. People are fleeing cities and, and moving to these destination markets, whether it's temporary or, or permanent. Um, so those home prices, the, the values have stuck despite the lack of uh, rentals in, in some of the locations. Uh, and then the last key point that, that the article came up with was that hotels are going to rebound. And I, I think hotels will rebound in 2021, but I don't think it's going to be the big threat to short-term rentals in 2021. Uh, a lot of new people have been discovering the short-term rental segment, and those folks are going to continue to make their decisions based on 
on why they're traveling. If it's a couple of nights in a city, it's still likely going to be uh, a hotel. But if they're going to a destination market for one week, two weeks, or, or longer, it's most likely going to be in a rental. Uh, so I think the, the future is still uh, maybe a bit early to call, given all that's going on. I don't know if regulations are going to shake out uh, in our favor with this swing of the pendulum uh, in, in some markets. In others, I, I think we have a really good shot at uh, overturning some bad regulations and, and maybe affecting uh, regulations to not limit licenses so much. But the, the future of short-term rentals, it, if 2020 was the worst year ever, uh, then I think we're in, in good shape for 2021. Awesome. Yeah, no, I agree. Well, uh, you guys uh, ready for this uh, awesome special guest? Speaking of short-term rentals, you know, we're talking about regulation and safety and security and all that good stuff. You guys ready for this? Absolutely. All right, let's Anyone? do one. Welcome, Leo. How are we doing today? Hey guys, yeah, I'm very well, thanks. Thanks for having me on. How are you all? Good, good. I, I'd first like to say congrats to Leo. He just got engaged a, a week or two back. <laughs> Woo, congrats. Congrats. Taking the plunge. Thanks, well, I mean, look, some, someone said to me, you know, you picked possibly the best time to do it because, you know, your partner had just been through six months of lockdown. <laughs> one, of the, one, of the worst, one of the worst years of all time and pretty much just just me to hang out with for six months so you know i, I think <laughs> you know you got to pick your moment right you got to pick your moment yeah, the best as ever yeah um yeah no it's, it's true but thanks but thanks we're, we're very excited about it um uh we're thinking to we're going to do something small covid compliant in the spring and then probably have a big party in 18 months time um, where I fully expect to see Michael Golding dancing on tables till two, <laughs> three o'clock in the morning. I don't know about you guys, but I just think there's going to be a collective rush to just party so hard. And I don't know if it's going to come um, next year or if it's going to come the year after. But I just think whoever gets married or who has a christening or a bar mitzvah, who even knows, right? I think they're just going to be some wild um, and, and way long overdue social gatherings. For sure. Couldn't agree more. Could not agree more. I saw the world of smiling when it was at the what party? You saw the biggest smile so far. It's one today. So I think <laughs> we're all looking at some events and just having a drink and enjoy, right? And not have this constant fear. I think we are looking looking for this a lot. Mm. Yeah. No, I think I think that's it, isn't it? I think that is. I mean, we're, we're you know we're, we're seeing it in um, in our sector, right? You know, there's a lot of pent up energy around coming and having uh, trips. Um, you know, all, all, all our businesses are seeing that hotels, short term rentals. Um, you know, I don't know about you guys, but every conversation I have with someone else on Zoom, which is just so boring now, uh, speaking to your relatives in the evening. Sorry if any of my relatives are listening, but it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> everyone's like, oh my God, I can't wait to go. I can't wait to come to, um, you know, I can't wait to come to Europe or I can't wait to go to Italy. And, you know, we, we just know there's yeah. going to be this, com this, this complete explosion. And it, it kind of leads me on to say that. You know, Michael knows this, but Will, um, I've actually never been to the United States of America. Um, unbelievably. Wow. Unbelievably. Okay, well, we got to change that. We got to change that yeah. once everything opens up. You're welcome. Yeah. I'll br Basically, bring you over to this Seattle. This we'll is do my live way live on somewhere. It will be fun. Yeah. In the same <laughs> studio. Yeah. Well, this is my way of saying, Will, Michael, can you guys, can you guys put me up for free? You know, I'll, I'll sleep on your couch. Like, when, yeah. 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 We'll I got a couch yeah. right here. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that's awesome. Well, um, I wanted to like just bring you. So we're talking about like parties and the pent up like building of you know travel and stuff. And so like obviously noise aware with the you know noise detection and sound monitoring. Um, well, let's just jump into what Guard Hog really is and what you guys do because I think there's a, a a good correlation there between you know noise aware and Guard Hog and Super Hog and all the stuff that you guys are doing the vacation rental space and uh and how that kind of plays into the partying and and all that good stuff 
Yeah, it does. It does for sure. Thanks. Um, and again, I you know I have the I have the great fortune of getting to spend a lot of time with with Michael Golding because our businesses definitely overlap. We we see risk in the short term rental industry as being um, our, uh, our business, right? You know, we Gardog Technology is in the risk mitigation business. How can we make home sharing transactions safer for our property management partners, for our hosts, and for our guests? So, you know, uh, the COVID house party phenomenon has shown that actually the the, the risk that everyone talks about, the headline risk is, is parties. Um, and also there's, you know, beyond that, there's the risk of personal injury in homes. And these properties aren't set up for personal injury claims just on normal home insurance. So that's, I think, where the two come in is that there's an extreme party risk, which is definitely um, where some of the tech that we've built is trying to get ahead of that. Um, mm -hmm. And then and obviously where, where Michael's business is, where Noiseware is. And then there is actually the liability, which is the big, which, which is the big one. And, you know, both of those things, I think, have been increased during COVID times, especially because people are drinking more. The, the club is now the Airbnb. It's now the booking.com. You know, all you know, people are people are not able to go out and let their hair down. So they're kind of doing it behind closed doors. Um, and Guardhog Tech started life about four years ago. Um, my sort of romance with the short-term rental industry goes back a bit further to 2012. I was part of the team that helped build and grow and sell One Fine Stay. So I kind of knew instantly uh, joining Guardhog where we needed to be in terms of making sure we were dealing with risk. But we see our principal focus as being the protection um, so that means paying out claims for damage and liability, but then also just removing risk factors in the first place. So partnering with people like NoiseAware and also um, creating our own tools, which is uh, Superhog, to make sure we can reduce the risk um, by basically getting all guests to go through an ID verification and database check before they book to make sure that um, they're not a problem guest that's had a party or caused deliberate damage or trash a vacation rental place before they come. And that's what our Superhog product does. So Guardhog Tech is the company that sits above it. That's the insurance and the risk management. Superhog is the product. The idea being that we can help property managers and direct hosts get ahead of things by saying, don't take this guest because they had a party in Atlanta and they're coming to do the same thing in New York. So reject the booking. So is that guest, uh, is that Michael Golden, the one in Atlanta to New York? Is, was that I, him? I couldn't possibly say, Well, I, I wouldn't want to, you know, I think I, I've been told to sign something, so I don't tell stories, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, I was going to say, you were talking about him dancing on tables until 2 a.m., so I figured that would be the, that'd be the party. He's never been to New York or Atlanta, so he doesn't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Maybe his technology does. Yeah, basically, the way that Leo and I see it is uh, how our products fit in together with one another. They can do the guest screening on the, the front side of the booking before the guest arrives. It's not 100% certain you're going to catch the person trying to throw a party or even it just gets too drunk and makes decisions that they wouldn't normally make. And that's where Noiseware comes in is we're actually able to monitor the booking while the booking's in your property. And if that guest doesn't comply with rules or uh the, the property manager reaching out to the guests even when they know something's happening or they don't get out to the property fast enough if this party went from zero to 100 because they brought the club back with them, mm -hmm. uh, then that's where their their insurance piece comes in and, and they're able to cover any damage that might happen. So it really covers the booking from start to finish. Yeah. yeah. And, and oh, as, as, as kind of talked about already, you know, we're seeing that, COVID's changed how people travel. So, you know, people are um, making their bookings um, very last minute, which, you know, makes everybody nervous. Um, you know, slightly different, I think, for you, Michael Ross, bedroom. But, you know, it, it certainly makes vacation rental people nervous when they see a last minute mm -hmm. booking because there isn't that sort of check-in presence. So there isn't someone to like, you know, uh, check your bags, take a picture of your passport on site. Um, and, you know, as a business, as a vacation rental management business or a direct host, we're in uncharted territory, I think, because in the time I've been in the industry, I don't think the guest has ever been the commodity. I think actually vacation rental managers and hosts have been desperate for properties. And now it's it, that, that you have to look after that guest because suddenly with this really acute situation over the last six months, you don't want to lose that guest. So you want to take that last minute booking. But you mm. and you may, you may even be coming from a more localized 
source. So that's also another potential risk factor is that if you're you might be staying in New York, but actually living on living in Long Island. I've completely made that up, but there you go. <laughs> um, you know, and, and then a vacation rental manager traditionally might have looked at that and gone, hold on a minute. They're only coming or 80 miles into town. That 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 seems a bit scary. Why are they traveling such a short amount of time? Is it for a party? So, you know, w- with all those things happening, you have to have technology and devices like Michael's and uh, and insurance to make sure that you know which are the right bookings to take and you can mitigate risks, but still take bookings to, to make sure you make money. Well, do you use well, a lot of advertising strategies? So I don't know if you have this. So are you creating kind of probes of people and say, okay, I know this is a good guess for, for a while or he booked whatever X many times already and it was always went okay. So can you uh, do revenue management, revenue management based on the profile or more on the uh, uh, potential risk? I'll take this one. So yes and no. I mean, you're not changing the price of the booking because they've already booked it, but you might insert a uh, right. deposit or something. Yeah, well, you would say, yeah, and the deposit I get, but you would say, for example, when you're creating loyalty, you could think about loyalty opposite, right? And this is still... We're reviewing hotels or properties. We get common with the other side. I'm still curious why properties don't view the guests. So when you have a specific profile, whatever, it could be on our platform or whatever, even on Airbnb, it's okay, this guest always was taking care of the property, et cetera. So you create a kind of a batch or level. So okay, if you're reaching this kind of level, you can get discount or you're saving because you prefer to have those people in your property. Could be also a batch, for example, like for example, when you don't waste all the towels or whatever. So you get a kind of a green batch because it increases you something extra, a few extra points of loyalty. I'm just thinking, how can you use this data, for example, also just to drive specific groups of people based on pricing, whatever, to your property if you're looking at vacation rental. Of yeah. course, it's a privacy thing, but the other hand, you would say, I will do everything to leave this property like a bit clean or keep it, take care of it because no, next time I could get another property maybe for a better, for a better price. Michael, yeah. I, think it's, I think it's great. I think we, we always try and encourage our partners to put offers on Superhog as well, um, you know, to, to incentivize those guests that are Superhog members because like, yeah. like you, say, you should, you, you should definitely be rewarded. But I think the more general point around loyalty is, we as an industry, uh, people within the industry need to do more also to feel um, safer with direct bookings and mm-hmm. knowing that your guest is is has been verified or is known to us um, or you've contacted them and you've made an effort to turn them into a repeat guest means you then can start to discount them as well because you're moving them off platform. So that for, for property managers, that, that, that's also another way of doing it. But yes, you're quite right. When it comes to sort of uh, being able to give people the benefit of our learning, then then we always encourage people to to sort of make make offers available to people because qu- quite right, like you know, if you've stayed five times and you've been the model guest and you haven't stole the towels, then yeah. you know you, you you deserve that towel money back. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I was yeah. gonna say as like a yeah, previous people take it maybe more serious. You know that some people when they go to a property or in the hotel, they're making a mess, right? They think it will be cleaned anyway, and there's no difference. And maybe when they see a difference later in the pockets. When they're getting a discount because they are creating more loyalty points, could be anything, right? Could be also that at a hotel, if we're looking at this industry, that's okay. I incentivize, for example, the guests took care of it, then use the hotel, I give them some extra loyalty points. Whatever, how can you incentivize behavior of people during this stay? Mm. No, yeah, I, it's it's interesting. I think it's a lot easier to do in hotels than it is in rentals. Um, you know, if I stay at the Marriott. Nine times out of 10, I stay in a Marriott, I'm traveling for work and I'm there for a night or two. I'm not making a mess. I'm not staying for a long period. I don't have four people packed into the room. But 50-50 when I'm in a rental, I'm either traveling for work or I'm traveling with friends or family. And, you know, I'm usually the one that books it because everyone, you know, assumes that I need to be the one that books it because I'm in the industry. I like to take the opposite stance. I try not to be the one that books it. but. (laughs) <laughs> um, but depending on the group and what you're traveling for and how long you're there, like one side of my family is is terribly messy and I don't want to be dinged for the rest of my, you know, 10 people that are staying in the house um, that aren't as clean as I am. And that's where it gets a lot more challenging in the rental side than, than on the hotel side. 
And I was going to say, as like a previous hotel manager, we're so used to those like last minute bookings. Like, but like, I know when I walk in in the day, we have, you know, 20 arrivals that can change any time I will go up to like 50, you know? And so with vacation rental management, like that, that mindset or that like understanding um, for me, like shifting into vacation rentals, wasn't like being like, Oh, we're getting a booking tomorrow. Like all these questions and concerns and like red flags that people uh, vacation rental managers that haven't been hotel side uh, weren't red flags to me because at the end of the day, like I'm used to all that. So it's interesting to see how like vacation rental managers are actually looking at all this stuff as in if it's within 48 hours, it's kind of concerning. Um, when in, in reality, I think like as you know, COVID, like we said, has sped a lot of things up and we talked about flexibility and all this other stuff. I think we're going to see that to be, you know, a very common thing. Like people are just going to say, you know what? It's going to be it's going to become a very good like hybrid model, like hotel style transactions and and booking like patterns. Um, to me, that just is how I see it from being on the hotel side and vacation rental side. But I'm kind of uh, yeah. Maybe a question for for you, Will and Ross. Um, the the booking window has compressed by many many weeks in in short term rentals. When people are in rentals, mm-hmm. they're planning out three or four weeks in advance historically. Now, you know, eight out of 10 bookings are coming within a seven day period. What has the booking pattern changed much in hotels? Do you guys know? Yeah, a lot. We saw before yeah. it was like people were booking in average like months. I think it was two months up front. We saw a lot of people booking. And now like just talk about one year ago, right? If you see what's happening now, it's everything is so last minute. It's all flexible. You just can people just booking multiple properties, multiple places. It's it's changing a bit. Um, so your booking behavior will change. I mentioned already in the previous episodes. Like you see, the length of stay is changing. Uh, so if people traveling actually made a move somewhere else, you can see they just also want to extend their stay. As soon as they just say this place is good, I'm staying here for a few days. Actually, I enjoy it. You can see they want to stay longer and this is fine for us we just don't take a margin anyway you can deal directly with the hotel or with the uh with the property owner that's fine but this is what you see what what we can see this as well so people first they making maybe first first small stay to see is everything good in there and then they extend it for a longer period and say okay i want to stay here for coming weeks because actually i'm settled here it's fine kids are doing homeschooling remotely using zoom or teams holiday with their with their class it's fine. We can, and it's also be nice in that different environment, right? People want to be somewhere else. So you still see that people travel, but it's just, of course, is the the booking window. It's yeah, it's last minute, for sure. I'm I'm even doing the same thing with vacation rentals. Me and you know the girlfriend and her family wanted to go to Leavenworth for the weekend. So like we we're you know randomly just picking up last minute days and and times to to go do these things. So um, I, I yeah like hotels is constant like it's never been for me it's always been like there's always those spur of the minute trips um I, as a traveler uh you're gonna see but um going to the vacation rental side too i think like i you know was casual on airbnb and we're like all right we're gonna go for this day and i'm seeing a lot more properties even now except like one night stays there was a lot they're like oh we only do two night minimum or whatever so now it's but now it's like hey we'll take anything we'll come in for the night they're starting to let their guard down a little bit but um it's been interesting to watch as like both being in the industry and a consumer. Um, but I actually had a question regarding for Leo and uh, Golden um, for this like pent up like party, you know, anticipation, right. Where that we're expecting, I think like, are, what are you guys expecting or like predicting anything for like when like vaccine is open or like the government is like, all right, we're opening up. We're, we're going back to a normal of, in the sense of, you know, not having to stay at home and be locked down. Are you guys expecting like a big, uh, I guess, anticipation or even, I guess, a big amount of activity going on in the industry? Like, I, are we even prepared for that? That's why I'm like wondering as like an industry, are we prepared for these millions of people that are locked down? And like, I know people that haven't left for like nine months, like they've been at home and like maybe they've gone to like the grocery store. So yeah. I'm like, I'm curious to see. So are we prepared? I, I would, I, I would say customers of Leo's and, and ours are much better prepared than others. Yeah. Um, we saw after the first lift of the lockdowns over the summer, like a three hundred x of noise events, problematic noise events happening. 
And year over year, the, the amount of parties was like almost 50% increase, which is a, a decent chunk, but that's, that's not even a full lift of lockdowns and that's not even with everybody feeling comfortable. Um, so I, we, we have started to see a little bit of a, a dip in the noise events that really started September, October, uh, which is historically very slow season in almost every market. But I, I'm super curious to see what New Year's looks like this year. Um, I think by, by New Year's, people are, are pretty much either had it or um, just ready to, to let loose and have a good reason, good excuse to do so. And then once the, the vaccine comes out, yeah, I mean, you, you'll see people who haven't traveled in nine months who typically take two or three trips a year who have now a lot more money in their pocket because they've been saving it, just doing things that they would may not have normally been doing because uh, they just feel the need to, to let loose so bad. Yeah. Leo, are you guys seeing a lot on your end? Yeah, we similar as you, uh, you won't be surprised to hear. You know, when when we when we got a summer off, so to speak. Um, you know, oh, the glorious days of July when we could you know sit sit inside places. Wow, um, <laughs> we, definitely, we we definitely saw a huge jump in bookings and then huge jump in in attempted claims and issues that we had to to get involved get involved in um, people getting carried away. Because again, there's there's this thing of you know, yes, there's. The uh, the flashpoint has been party lockdown parties for Airbnb, but the volume hasn't been there for anyone. So like they're like, and I think I said it earlier. Those people are saying, look, I can't wait to be. I don't know. I'm going to get a group of my friends together. We haven't gone on a group holiday in three years, and we're going to rent a villa in Ibiza, and we're going to let loose because we haven't partied together for a couple of years, and and that is going to come with a lot of accidental damage. Um, it's going to come with a lot of liability claims and people trip over slip and, you know, are generally using properties in a way that, that, that they weren't designed to be used. And we, I think, yeah, collectively, I mean, beyond vacation rentals, I think we are going to see a, collectively a big reaction that people are just going to love having their freedom back. We're so not used to being uh, in chains as, as, as people that, you know, we, we've all just adapted, but, you know, sure. But what's the what's the positive side of it? Well, I always I hear from everyone the positive side is that I've got my savings in order. The positive side is I'm always on top of my washing. Well, I, I tell you what, that isn't going to cut it. As soon as we're allowed to go out and have some fun, that's not going to cut it. People are going to be like, I want to spend this money and I want to catch up with my friends that I haven't seen properly. And you know, we all know know what it's like now to have freedom taken away from us. So. We, you know, we, we know it might happen again. We know, know it might happen in two, three, four, five years. So we're going to make hay while the sun shines. So, um, yes, it's going to come undoubtedly, um, and it's it's going to be welcome because that means bookings. So that's the mm -hmm. thing about this. Like, I'm certainly not the fun police. You know, like I, I want the bookings to happen. I just want to make sure that there is this sense of community, which is what home sharing is all about. Is is the fact that people respect the fact they're in other people's homes. And there's ways that you can do that by making them do ID verification and certification and, um, you know, join your club. There's ways to check, keep them in line through a noise aware box, just reminding them that maybe the, the noise has gone a bit high. Like there's things we can do to make the whole thing safer and make sure that everyone's having fun in logical ways. Um, uh, uh, but but again, it's making sure that people realize that the heart of vacation rental is, is staying in another person's space, whether that be a um, managed by a manager or, or through a direct host to the point where they shouldn't. They shouldn't be trashing it, and it, it goes for hotels too, right, Michael? It's, it's the same yeah. thing, isn't it? You know, you it's it, you know you you just want people to, to be respectful, and so mm -hmm. we want it to happen because we want the volume, but we just want it to happen in a safe way. Well, I'm curious because, of course, one of the most things to people decide now is the safety, but it's also, of course, is, is like the people who stayed before you. They were not like having a, a quarantine party there, or they were in quarantine, or they were had corona before, so it maybe they touched everything and etc. So this is still, and of course, I saw some initiative of temperature checks and everything before you arrive into the vacation rental property, etc. You think there will be, of course, yes, of course, noise and everything can be can be measured. I'm just thinking, how are you going to adopt, for example, or just check, for example, the the uh, temperature, or you didn't check that the st people staying there are there where are they were saved? Did they didn't have Corona? The, the people who stayed before you, because that's I think holding other people, right? When I'm talking to my wife, she would go somewhere, even renting something. She to want to clean everything because maybe the people before, in this case, they 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 might be had COVID. So mm -hmm. this is something also in place. Like okay, how you can reduce this risk? Yeah, 
I think there's two ways of doing it. One, a lot of managers are already building in an extra day for their turns yeah. mm -hmm. because it's extra cleaning. And, and then another simple thing that I've heard some people doing is leaving a, a box of Lysol out and letting, if the guests you know have high touch surfaces yeah. and, and you don't know if and you want to make sure a hundred percent that it's been cleaned, here you go. Like it, it's been cleaned, but to, to put your mind at ease, uh, feel free to use this. Yeah. And it just comes like, I think, um, Leo, when we were talking prior to the, this episode going live was, you know, we talk about trust and safety. And I think we talk about, you know, barrier to entry being a little bit higher with just, you know, verify, verifying ID. Then of course, as a, like, I think of my clients, like the homeowner themselves, the, the people that own the asset, right. That we get to use and make a lot of money on, um, you know, there's a big trust side of things when it comes to, you know, saying we do, you know, verify and vet our guests properly and, and use resources like super hog and noise aware in the property. And this, like we have all these certain barriers uh, in there. And then of course, now, like we saw in the very beginning, uh, you know, April, March, April, and into May, vacation rentals, not like only hotels, like Hilton did their super clean, um, you know, like verification, like seal on the door, like where it's like, you know, you just now opened it and it's, uh, you know, you're the first one to enter since housekeeping left. And we're seeing vacation rentals really do that. Like Michael was just saying, you know, doing extra stuff, adding a day between bookings. And then of course, for your own safety and comfort as a guest to say, you know, here's Lysol, just in case you really just want to have that peace of mind for yourself, which then again, it goes back to the same topic that we bring up all the time is flexibility and, and comfort and safety. I think they all kind of tie together. If you had a thread and you put all those words in line, you could really connect them um, with just understanding that uh, trust, safety, and then of course, peace of mind that they all kind of apply it together with flexibility for the guest and, for the client who actually owns the asset, whether it's the vacation rental company or the actual homeowner. I think, I think that's completely right. Well, it's a, it's, it's making sure that you're doing enough as a business to make your host feel comfortable. It's making sure you're doing enough to make your guest feel comfortable. Um, and that you are taking your responsibility seriously. In 2019, um, that wasn't COVID. That was that was you know just parties and things like that. Now COVID is an, an extra element of that. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, it needs to be something. Um, I know there's some good businesses in the space helping people write cleaning checklists and protocols and things of that nature. I think all of that is is really really necessary um, because yes, it, it it's all about if you are a property manager especially, you're the you're the uh, the point in between guest and host. So you're trying to make both of them feel really comfortable because comfortable hosts unlocks new supply and new supply opportunities in, in growth areas. Supply acquisition, traditionally always the, the, the biggest hurdle for any growing property management company. And mm -hmm. then, uh, yeah, the, I, I, as you say, making sure that guest feels comfortable, that sort of seal of, um, okay, this is, this is approved and I know this listing is real. Um, I know that the host isn't, I'm not going to turn up and the host isn't going to say, actually, it's a container ship outside the back. You're not actually in the apartment, you're in the, you're in the freight. Um, uh, it, it, you know, it, it, it's all part of the same game and it builds authentic authenticity. And that's what all of this stuff's mm -hmm. about, building authenticity and building professionalism on both sides. Agree. I agree. Awesome. Well, we're getting to that that time in the episode where, uh, we wrap things up. We throw out any, um, you know, shameless shout out plugs of, you know, upcoming events or, you know, stuff like that. So, Leo, I'll let you take the lead on this one. And I want to show this for the audience, you know, this awesome Christmas <laughs> version of Guard Hog logo, yeah. just because I think it's great. But, um, Leo, we'll let you take the lead. What's going on with Guard Hog, like coming out in, you know, obviously we're getting close to like the new year and Christmas and, all that good stuff. So I'll let you go ahead and take the take the microphone from there. Thanks. Thanks, Will. Yeah. So I'd say um, we know it's been a rubbish year to 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 say the least. So we're um, we're offering ten thousand pounds, which is uh, in today's money about thirteen thousand um, dollars. Although who knows when we finally leave the European Union, that catastrophic 
ca catastrophic error. It might be it might be twenty thousand dollars. Who knows? But uh, assuming all well there, we've got ten thousand pounds for it in our um, promotion called Boost Twenty Twenty to offer to property management companies to give them a hand getting back on their feet after COVID. So you know, it's um, basically we're just looking for people to email us and tell us why they think their business um, is worthy of getting getting the boost. Um, I think there's also some smaller packages as well that you can get. So the big prize is 10K, but there's some smaller ones too. Um, and look, we, we just want to hear from you. We know it's been a bad year and um, we've got this budget to, to, to give away as a prize. So we're, we're really happy to do that. And then another thing we'll be doing as well, just to make things a little bit easier, right up until the 31st of March, we're going to offer anyone who joins Superhog the first 60 days of membership is free. Uh, that's for a direct host or, or for a property manager. So they're my shameless plugs. That's awesome. Awesome. I'll let you uh, take it away, Michael, uh, from NoiseAware. Yeah, so we're coming off of uh, a record Black Friday for, for NoiseAware and rolling into nice. Cyber Monday. And, and it's already uh, off to the races, which is really good to see. Um, so, and now's the, the perfect time to get it right before, uh, New Year's, especially yeah, like yeah. You, uh, alluded to earlier. So, um, it's been a, it's historically one of our best weekends, uh, and it's certainly proven that, uh, again this year. Woo. Awesome. And Ross. Perfect. Well, I think I always say that Bidum, we are the good guys in the industry helping everybody, but Leo seems to be a good guy as well in, uh, providing <laughs> <laughs> so now I think, I think it's nice what you see. I just shared last time already a promo code. I think it's still flooded so people don't have a bit of membership and they want to travel again. And yes, we also have vacation rentals and hotels. We have it all. MR FP20. Uh, so you can still use this promo code till uh, I think till today. So be quick. I will just I will just extend it for a week. So people just listening a few days later, no worries. MR FP20. So free membership for bedroom. Um, but yeah, I think it was a nice episode. Great, uh, Leo. Thanks for for joining and. Uh, yeah, let's stay in contact. Yeah. Uh, I will apply for the 10K or I can't uh, apply for it. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you write a good enough case, I'll consider it. So let's hear it. <laughs> cool. Thank you. Guys. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you guys for, uh, you know, obviously taking the time on this awesome Monday. Thank you, Leo, for being on the show and just talking about all the things. Guard Hog, you guys are great. Love working with you guys. And uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next week.